Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at Sierra Chart and we're going to look at some common tasks in Sierra Chart so that we can get a good overview of how the platform works and how the different parts interact with each other. So I have a regular Sierra Chart uh, instance open here. You can see I have a toolbar. I have a green uh, connection status here. I am connected to the rhythmic connection. So let's start with opening up a chart. So the easiest way I think to do that is just to go to the FS button here or find symbol button. And then we'll go ahead and select uh, an instrument here. So I'm going to choose a futures instrument and we'll just use the ES as an example. You can see we have uh, several different contract months uh, listed here. Uh, we can see which ones are expired recently. Um, I'm going to choose the current active month here as, as of the time of this video, which is the September contract. And from here, we can actually do several things. We can open up charts, open up trading domes. So uh, like I said, we're going to start out with a chart here. So I'll select open intraday chart. Now we have a regular ES one minute chart here. And we're just using regular open high low close bars. But uh, we may actually want to change that. Maybe we want to use something different than those open high low close bars or maybe something uh, different than the one minute period. We can do this by accessing the chart settings window. So if I go to the CS button here on our toolbar or chart settings button, uh, that allows us to change some of those options. So we'll start first with how many days we want to load. Uh, so we can, of course, you know, tell it to load more or less days here. Uh, I'm going to just leave it at the default 30. Now, one thing I do want to change here is the bar period. Uh, we're currently on that one minute time frame, but if I were to change it to say, for example, five minutes, I would just type a five here. You can see the naming convention here and the different options. So we're not just limited to time periods. We can also do volume, range, Renko, uh, and so forth. Now I can actually just select apply and it will go ahead and load that up for me. So I can kind of preview the changes before I uh, close out this chart settings window. Now the other thing I want to go over here is the session times. So the session times is going to control uh, what time periods of the market that we actually want to display within our chart. Now I'm using a 24 hour uh, time frame here so it's going to show all of the data but say I wanted to limit that to uh, let's say uh, 10 p.m. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, do that here so I'll type in 2200 and then it would go ahead and uh, limit those hours. We can also split it up into uh, multiple sessions here. So we can do the start and uh, end time here. For example, let's say uh, 0930. So 930 is our start time. And then we'll go ahead and use 415 here as an example of our end time. So let's go ahead and do that. And I actually need to change this here. So we'll change this to 09, so 9.30 to 4.15. And then we can also use an evening session. So uh, I could just limit it to that 9.30 to 4.15, but we can also add in some of the evening session here uh, without adjusting our um, uh, regular start and end time. So maybe I don't want to include um, you know, some of the time between the end time here of the uh, regular session. And uh, we can do that, for example, I want to cut out, say, 4.15 to uh, 5 p.m. So I can do that just by selecting our evening session start time at uh, 5 p.m. here and then going through, uh, say, the end of the day. And that will adjust that here. And of course, you can adjust the evening end as well. Or you can elect to just use these regular session times uh, within your chart. Now another thing I want to uh, address here is the uh, bar type. So I'm using open high low close bars, but uh, I happen to prefer candlestick bars. So I'll just switch that here, select apply, and that changes that out for us. So that covers a few different options there. You know, whether we want to change the um, amount of data that's loaded here, whether we want to filter out some of that data, so only show, you know, between 9.30 and 4.15 in, in this case, and also uh, the bar period. So, you know, how much time each of these bars is uh, going to display. Um, I'm using a five minute uh, uh, bar period now, but of course you can choose kind of whatever you like here as far as days, minutes, seconds, volume, range, or Renko uh, as we looked at before. 
Now, another thing that we can take a look at through here is to um, the rollover uh, uh, option here. So we can choose to automatically roll over our future symbol. So uh, we can have that done just by applying here. Now we happen to still be on the September contract, so it's not gonna roll me over there, but uh, you can use this option if you wish. So we'll go ahead and leave that off for now. And I'll go ahead and select OK. So now we have this five minute chart here for the ES, uh, but maybe I wanna add some studies to this chart or indicators to this chart. We can absolutely do that uh, you know, pretty quickly here as well. So right next to our chart settings window is the studies window. But uh, I also wanna show you the other way you can access those. So chart settings also shows up within the right mouse click menu. So I could select chart settings, or I could also check uh, or select the uh, studies window here. And that's gonna bring up the same thing as if we use the toolbar icon, that SW button. Now we have all of these studies on the left-hand side available to us. And on the right-hand side are going to be the studies that are actually applied to the chart. You can see it's blank now because I don't have any extra studies, but uh, if I wanted to add one, I would just select it here and select add so that it displays within here. Now if I select apply, you'll see that channel is now added to our chart. And I can add in multiple uh, indicators if I wanted to or multiple studies. Uh, for example, that's a Keltner channel, so that's going to apply right over my uh, price uh, period or price bars by default. But if I wanted to choose something that maybe uh, displayed within the lower panel, I could do that as well. You can see the ADX is now applied as well. And we'll go ahead and leave those two on there. So now we've added studies, changed the bar periods, the bar type, uh, as well as filtered out some of the data from the overnight session. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other options here. One thing we may wanna do now that we've adjusted these settings is uh, maybe use this as a template. Uh, maybe I wanna open an NQ chart, but with the same studies, the same time filter, uh, and uh, the same you know, bar types and so forth. So everything on this chart, just accept the symbol. We can absolutely do that as well pretty quickly. So if we go to the chart uh, menu here on our toolbar, we can actually duplicate our chart. So we can duplicate it uh, right within this existing chart book. And I'll go over chart books in uh, a minute here. They're similar to kind of a workspace or a collection of charts um, that you can organize together. You know, for example, if you have all of your currencies in one chart book, uh, you could also have, you know, all of your e-minis in another or um, kind of differentiate that way. So let's go ahead and duplicate this chart. So now we have two charts uh, that are the same. We can actually organize them by going to the window here. So I can you know, organize them horizontally if I want to. I could or organize them uh, vertically if I wanted to. But let's go ahead and change that symbol. Uh, once we have that here, we can go to back to that chart settings and then go ahead and click the find. Uh, so if I go to chart settings, go to symbol here, we see it's currently the ES just like it was on that first chart. So I'll go ahead and select find and we'll uh, find ourselves back at this familiar find symbol window that we opened up originally. So from here, I can go ahead and choose that NQ symbol. So NQ September, and then select apply. And that's going to use all of those same settings, but uh, for my second symbol. Now it's also uh, an, an uh, option to duplicate this to a, another chart book. Um, now we only have this chart book open here, so we can't actually do that. So let's go ahead and also create a new chart book. Again, a chart book is just a collection of windows. So we'll go ahead and say new chart book. So if I go to that file menu, you'll see we have a section here for our chart books. So I'll select new chart book, and this opens up a fresh one here. So you can see I have chart book three, where we have those two charts, and I also have chart book four here. Now I can go ahead and uh, duplicate this chart to another chart book. So we'll use that chart book for just to illustrate how that works as well. And if we go to chart book four, now we have that same chart in there and I could change the symbol and adjust that as I wish. So that's a pretty easy way to go ahead and uh, organize your charts, you know, duplicate charts, use one as a template, for example, um, add indicators and also adjust the session timing um, or rollover settings uh, for any of these instruments. So that's just kind of a quick overview of Sierra chart and some basic functions that you might use in your everyday trading um, or things that you may 
want to kind of take a look and see how they work. If you have any questions about these uh, options or any questions about Sierra Chart in general, please feel free to let us know at any time and give us a call or visit our website at optimusfutures.com.